What we're going to be covering in this video is UVs and what they are, how you can make use of them, how you can use them to your advantage, and just in general, good kind of practices with it. So if you saw the previous video, what I ended up doing was I pressed U, I went Smart UV Project. What that does is it just, it automatically tries to unwrap it for you. It lays everything else out flat. Uh, but let's go ahead and just discuss what they are. So I'm going to go to UV Edit. I'm going to actually revert this back to what you would see. So you would be met with something like this. So if you click on a face, it appears, that kind of stuff. If you press A, it selects them all. You can come up here and press the button with the two arrows, and it will keep them visible, even if you don't have any face selected. Now, if you see here, we have six, yeah, four, yeah, six faces, and they are all laid out in the form of a cross. Well, that's because it's automatically unwrapped this for us. We don't have any custom seams here, so no matter what, if I just select all, press U, and hit unwrap, it's going to make, it's still going to be unwrapped for us kind of automatically. Similar to that of kind of smart UV project, just in a different way, I think. But this could lead to some problems. So we're going to kind of go and do this a little bit manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply create double seams. So you can see here when I click this edge, this and this edge, and this vertice here, you can tell they're connected. So as I drag it around, it's moving them all around in the UV space. So I'm just going to select that, and these, so I'm just going to select these three. Right click and hit Mark Seam. If you don't see Mark Seam, you're probably in Vertex Select. You have to make sure you're in Edge Select. And there we go. So now if I press A to select all, and U to unwrap, we see here we have a good face and five bad ones. Now I'm going to press N over here, go to View, Overlays, and Enable Stretching. Now what you would want to see from a good UV unwrap is all blue. If you have this bright green like that, or a little discoloration from blue is okay, but this bright green is horrible. So that's going to lead to some issues, and I'll show you those issues here. Let me go ahead and export this cube out and import it into Unreal Engine. But first, if we look at it now, here's how it is, you know, correctly, decently uh, unwrapped. If I re-import, we have some issues. So the top looks great. That's this face right here, this blue one. The rest of them, they're all skewed, directional, and stretched out really bad. So what we want to do is we want to fix that. So we're going to do this manually for now, and then, again, this isn't a tutorial necessarily on wrapping, but I'll show you a brief way to do it. Uh, this video is going to be sectioned off into all the parts of what I'm doing, because I'm going to go into different discussions on different topics about UV editing. But, yeah, I'm going to leave that there for now. So the goal is to get your object to lay flat. And the only places you can... Well, what you can do to get it to lay flat is you can make cuts in it. So let's say you have, you know, the good example. Let's say you made something out of paper. You made a, uh, I don't know, let's say you made this box out of paper. And you taped it all together so it holds its shape. Well, let's say, let me clear all the seams. Let's say everything here is pretty much a fold. And you've just taped this portion over. Well, what we want to do is we want to figure out where we can make our cuts to make the box lay flat. So if I create a seam here, well, that's not enough. We're just going to have, well, yeah, it's all going to be kind of squished. We have to smash it together with our hands to get it flat. And even then, it's not going to lay flat because we don't have any way to open it up. If I select this edge and this edge as well and mark the seam like I did a minute ago, this can now lay completely flat. So think of this edge right here that does not have the seam. This is a pivot point. So with these three cut, if I take it, I could take this side right here and lift it up. So this will be like a lid. I can just fold it open so it's laying vertically, so it's flat. Knowing that, that means I can take this edge, this edge, because they're all going to be connected, this edge and this edge, right-click, mark those seams, and unwrap it. 
So now I got a cross, like a T. So if I select these faces, yeah, it selected the wrong ones, like so. We see it selected all four of these. So we have the top, then this guy, then this guy, then this guy. They're all kind of interlinked. And then we have the two on the sides. So we unrolled the top half, and then the sides we just laid out flat. So if I export this now and re-import it, as you can see, it is fixed. Now you will probably have noticed something that I'm going to get into here. The size of each square changed. They got bigger. So to some extent, they kind of got less detailed. All you can't really tell with this material. I'm going to bring in a new material that'll do a good job at showing what I'm talking about. So I have this random texture here. It's a bunch of rocks, pretty much. I'm going to go ahead and create a material for it. Uh, let's do Blender Tutorial. And let's set that material. I'll just do it in here. So here's our rock or cube with a bunch of rocks. They're all the exact same size. They don't really, they kind of have a crease here. They don't start and stop at the same positions, except for in some areas like this one does. This edge is just fine. It starts, well, it continues over the crease. We look at somewhere, let's find one that doesn't like, and I kind of, no. So this one right here, this edge, this does not. So this stops right at the crease. It doesn't keep going. This one keeps going. And this one as well stops. So the ones that keep going just fine, like they, the rocks fold over top of the corners, it's going to be these faces here where we have, you know, just that they're all linked. But the sides here, we go from this side right here to right here and right here to right here. These are not going to fold over. So that's kind of our problem there that we would have to kind of live with unless we did our own little custom fancy work. But I want to get into the size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the top face, which is this one right here. I'll drag it over and I'll just scale it up. So if I go to file export, brand into Unreal Engine, watch this face right here. Everything else stayed the exact same, but this one got way more dense with rocks, and it looks a lot better. So it looks a lot crisper, we can get in a lot closer before the texture starts to get blurry from resolution. Now we can also, I'm going to go ahead and open that inside of Blender. We can see the kind of space it's taking up for the rocks. I can actually just let's see how do I actually view the shading? I remember, uh, I need a material, don't I? Yada, yada, yada. I, I really don't remember at all. Oh, right, I need to actually set it up in the shading. So let me set that up real quick. Add a texture, image texture. Grab this guy, plug it in, should be good. Yep. So here's our texture. You can see it's using the same UV space, so it's filling out this area a lot more dense. I just want to do that so we can see live changes like this. Now, that's just fine. It's There's a lot of reasons why you would actually probably want to do this, and the main one that comes to mind is with firearms. So let's say you have your game, First Person Shooter. Well, let's say you have a rifle. You don't need much detail on areas like the barrel. You don't need much on bolts. You know, that kind of stuff. They can be, uh, they can use a lot less detail. But things like the receiver, the rear sight, all that kind of stuff, you're going to want more detail on those. So this kind of works in that same way. So you can obviously get rid of this issue entirely by using like substance painter, marmoset, armor paint, that kind of stuff, and using triplanar projection. But for the sake of this video, let's say we don't have any of those software and we just want to use images we find online. 
well let's say we get our let's say this is a plastic material that has detail on it well this face i want to be my receiver and uh this face i want to be my iron sight my rear sight and everything else all of these i want to be other parts of the firearm that i don't care about they're going to be a lot less detailed what i can do is i can take the ones i want to be less detailed let me move these over and I can just scale them down. And that gives me a lot more UV space that I can take up so I want the rear sight to be bigger. Well, and I can just take it and I can scale it up. Now that I have extra UV space, I don't have to worry about it. So I can make full use out of it. Like so, so my rear sight right here is a lot more detailed. My receivers, more detailed. Everything else I don't care about has yeah, care about has less detail, so we don't have to worry about it, and it looks quite nice that way. Now, <clears throat> this has this brings on the other point of what if you had what if you wanted to duplicate. So what I mean by that, let's say we have a car. That car has four tires. You don't need, uh, what do you call it? You don't need four separate spaces for tires. Let me select these and just scale them down again. I'll move them kind of up here for now. So let's say I have four tires. These are my tires. Well, let's say I want them to have, you know, a decent bit of detail. So I'll just... I'll just select them all, scale them up by 1.3. Now they look, actually let's scoot up by 1 point, yeah, 1 point, yeah, 3 again. And I'll just rearrange them so they fit. So here we go. Well, unfortunately, this has taken up a lot of UV space. And these are just our tires. You know, we want them to look detailed, but not crazy. So here I have the rest of the vehicle. This will be... I don't know, this would be the body. Uh, this could be undercarriage, for example, just kind of whatever. That's as detailed as I can make these because that's all the room in the UV that I have to work with. The tires are taking up everything else. So I'm not able to get any extra detail out of, you know, the uh, the body or the undercarriage, wherever, wherever I want the detail to be. What I can do because my tires are all duplicates of each other, they're going to look the exact same. So what I can actually go about doing is I'm going to place all of these over top one of another. So I'm going to, this is going to be, I don't know, what do I do? Over top of this one, this over top of this one, this over top of this one kind of thing. So I'm going to move these all to the center just so I know they're, actually I'll move them at the uh, corner so I know where they're at exactly. Oops. So for all of the faces, so they're all sitting right here. This is all of my faces combined. So if I click one, I can drag it out. So what I can do is I have the same exact detail. I can move it right here in the corner for all four tires right in this one little space. Now that allows me to take my, you know, the remaining parts. I can move them wherever I want, but I can scale them up farther. I can make them a lot bigger. I don't have to worry about the constraint or the limiting area that all four of these tires gave me. So it allows me to just have more freedom to kind of do what I need to do with it. So I have these two areas are most detailed and my tires are all the exact same. I can, if I needed to, I can just simply scale it down some, however much I need to giving me the ability to, you know, scale these up or place more parts or all around and that kind of thing. So that's kind of how the overlaying would work. So you can overlay sections of the UV on top of each other that are matching, if you wish, to make use of this. So this is what I do actually for, uh, for optics. So when I make an optic for a rifle, I'll have the glass piece that you're looking through and the glass piece at the end they're going to be the exact same shape but they're different sizes so i will take those 
and I want them to be big as possible. I want them to have as much detail as they really can because those are the most important portions. So if I want to have any detail on the glass, that's where I want to put it. So what I'd do is I'd make, you know, scope body, you know, it's still going to be decent, but not crazy. About as big as I can within reason. And then I'm going to take my glass right here. I'm going to lay them on top of each other. So I'm going to just put them right on top of each other in the dead, roughly where I can. And I'll just take them and scale them up. And this allows me to have a lot of detail on the glass while still maintaining an okay amount of detail everywhere else, but I have the most focus on the glass. Now, most of the time, I'll have ex it'll be a separate material anyways for the glass. So you won't have these. It'll be a separate material. So you'll just have the glass. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to put it right in the dead center. So 0.5 and 0.5 and just scale it up until it just barely has any space around the outside like so. So now your glass is taken up all of it. As you can see, it's crisp everywhere. Perfect. And it still fits in within the UV. Now, if you really wanted to, let me move these back. You can also take your, oops, your map here, or your one uh, tile, and you can scale it way up if you wish. Let me find which one it is. That guy. You can scale it up past it. Now that's fine. The problem you'll run into, let me scale it up by 10 from here. So it should be tenfold. If we look at it, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the end. So we have ten. Well, one, two, let me go by blocks. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can see that it's tiling. So we have all these little squares. And that's because it's overside or it's bigger than the texture. So we're pretty much painting the texture here, 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 and so on all the way across this entire face, which obviously we don't want. So if we scale it down, we scale it to point zero point five. Well, now we just have five of them. So we have one, two, three, wait, that. looking at that right? Did I scale that correctly? Go back. Scale by five. One, two, three, four, five. So like that. So it kind of, it halved it. So that's kind of the, the the sense there. So you can still make use of it if you really, you know, you could uh, add some random rotations because that's kind of how landscapes work. So if you painted the texture across the landscape, you're going to have that same tiling going on. But what you would do is you would mask, you would kind of automatically just randomly mask out areas using functions that are built into the Unreal Engine materials and give it some randomization as well so it breaks up the tiling. It doesn't look like it's repeating like we just saw. So that's kind of how you would want to handle that. Now the other thing I want to talk about is seams. So what I want to do is I'm just going to unwrap it, get them all in the correct place, and hide up. Get rid of that image. We don't really want it anymore because we're going to open up Marmoset. And I'm going to use this for the example when we go to texture. I'm not actually going to bother doing proper texturing, but I'm just going to show you. So this is all fine and dandy. I don't have any way to really show it as it is, but if I add a loop cut all across the center here, we can use this as our seam example. So I added that. Just unwrap it. It's the exact same thing anyways and export it out. So I'm going to bring that into Marmoset. It's the exact same in Substance Painter, Armor Paint, uh, same thing actually texturing in Blender. I think you can paint and stuff like that now. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, for some reason it built in that material with it, so I'm going to delete that and just have our default material. Texture Project, link it. I'm going to add a dirt material. So I have this clay wet. I drag and drop. It looks just fine. You know, we're not seeing anything weird out of the ordinary. And I'll show you the reason for that. The reason is, all of these are kind of linked with all of these. So they're met up, they're facing, like, 
where this starts, or sorry, where this one ends, this edge right here, this begins. So the texture stops and starts again, but at the exact spot where it stopped. So if I were to take these faces, move them over here like that, so they're not in the same spot, and then export it out. I got to re uh, refresh it. Actually, I think I can do that with the texture project, can't I? I like reload it. I have no idea. I'll delete the default and I'll just drag it on there again. And of course, you're doing this again to me. Okay, new texture project it is. Link it. Drag and drop. There we go. If we look at it now, we can see there's a seam there. There's like this big line that goes all the way across it where we placed the seam inside of Blender. Now, the reason for that is, like I just said, the texture continues, it stops, and starts again. Well, where it starts at is a different spot than where it stopped at. So it's stopping, moving over in the texture, and starting again. It's not, it's not really being continuous. Now, thankfully, in our 3D software texturing packages, we have the ability to change the projection. So if I change this up to triplanar, like I mentioned, I think I mentioned earlier, it fixes itself. The scale just changed some, so I'd bump that to like 0.5. And we're pretty close to back to where we were before. So I'll go to 0.3. Yeah, 0.35. And there we go. We don't have any seams because we're not painting on top of the UVs. So if I look at the UV, the way it painted, it paints itself in a way where it's not going to be screwing with it, so to speak. Like it's kind of, I don't know how to explain it. Like it's, it's layering it. It's like it's wrapping it around itself, so to speak. So it's kind of like it's a smooth transition. It's not a, there's not a seam there. If I change it back to UV, you can see it, it just the way it lays out on the UV map. Is it back to one so it looks about right? You can see the issues. So that's kind of the problem that you're stuck dealing with. How in the world can I move that? There we go. So where this stops, this starts, there's a problem. And there's not really the only way you could get around that problem is to move that back to where it's supposed to be. So it stops and starts at that specific place, automatically reloaded. The, since my texture project seemed to break from that. Now, there's no seam because it's back in its T form. The texture just kind of keeps going right across because that seam is right about here. It just keeps going right across it like there's no problem. So, Hopefully that gave a good insight on UVs, how you can benefit from them, you can take full advantage of them, and that sort of thing. Because the same thing still kind of applies. So, for example, let me select all these, scale them down, select this guy, scale it way up. Make it as big as possible. Like so. I'm not sure which face that is. Okay, that's the side. Let me uh, reopen that up in Marmoset real quick. Okay, drag and drop that clay material. So if we go by UVs, all of these look like crap. They're zoomed way in. If we go to this guy, it's you know, it's really detailed, but again, go back into triplanar, it still scales it evenly across it. So you would have some issues with scaling if you went this route. So if you wanted this side to be bigger, you wouldn't really, you would have to kind of be forced to somewhat use UVs unless you had kind of separate material IDs that you could use. So you could drag and drop the material twice onto the same object, but scale a specific section up. Uh, you could also 
make use of the UVs in another way. And I have an example right here. So I have this texture. It's literally just a white background with a T in the middle. That's all it is. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make use of this. So I'm going to replace the texture with this T like so. And currently, as you can see, the T is there, continues down there. It's just all kind of weird. Let's look at that in Blender real quick. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dissolve this edge and re-unwrap. I'll go ahead and open up that T texture inside of Blender so we can see it. And here's how it looks. So we have the T, it's like right there in the center. So we're only getting part, just part of it. What we can do is if I wanted to have it so the T wrapped around all of these sides, so all around the outside like that, all I have to do is select all of those there. So here they are. And I'll just move them right to the dead center and fill them up. So I want this to be a white space, this to be a white space. Move these to the dead center, so 0.5. Select them all, well, just the ones in the middle, scale them up, and export. So now when I reload the model, it select something weird. Okay, I guess just the material didn't, uh, like, unapply it itself. Wait, do I have a separate material? Oh, that's why. Let me just delete the material, so I'm back to using the default. And we re-import. There we go. So now we have a T, T, upside down T, and a T. But nothing on the top or the bottom, it's all white space. So we just have one issue, and that should be on the back side of the T. So that should be this face here. I'll select it. And I'll just rotate it by 180 degrees. Re-import. And I did the wrong one. I did the one right beside that, didn't I? Yep. Then I'll select this guy, and that should be it. Oops. Rotate by 180 degrees. Export it out. And there we go. We now have T's, the correct direction going all the way across our cube. And that's only with one texture. So we're using one single T texture to wrap all the way around the cube. So there's, let me hide stretching so you can uh, see it a little better. But that's really all there kind of is. So you can make full use of it however you really wish. So like I could have these two here I'm really over at this point, so if you feel like stopping, just stop the video. There's no point in really continuing. So I have the top and the bottom. I want them to cover the T as well. I'll just shrink them down. Turn it a little better to the T. Export. When I re-import, it'll have the T on the top being very big, and the bottom being very big, and so on. So it's just kind of the same deal. I'm just over-explaining. Over but hopefully that covered pretty much everything... Well, for the most part, that there is to know about UVs. And maybe that explained it quite well. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. But yeah, a lot of these problems can be eliminated by using triplanar projection inside of your texturing software of choice, like I explained here. And that's about it. So, on a random note, some free advertisement. If you want to learn how to make an HK416, in the description is a link to a playlist that covers that from point A to point B. It's not my channel. But he goes through and he explains it quite well and he makes piece by piece. It's a low poly model version of the gun, so it's quite easy to follow through with if you have a basic understanding of Blender. And as always, if you like what I do and want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description where I have a Team Deathmatch series just there for patrons only and if you have any questions or anything like that you can also find my discord server in the description 
where you can ask anything game dev related, and I'll try to answer you to my best of my abilities. And if I can't, someone else probably will in that Discord. So, now that UVs are done, the next video, we're going to go into normal detail and a little bit of baking. We're not going to bake, but I'm going to explain what it does and how you can achieve it. So, I will see you in the next video.